I got digital dash, can't ride with a art. I walk in the store and I buy the stock. I hide in the bins and pull off the lot. Got two finna diamond, it cost me a lot. They flying like birds, but drop on this hot. 400 degrees, I burn up the block. Burn out, make one call, they turn out. See, see the gang, get the word out. When the shit getting hot, you the first out. Cover my wrist with a watch and I flood it with rocks. Now I look at the time all day. Be high, I wrap the old block and I drop off the top and I know you can see my face. You my dog at the end, don't care what the bitches say. Leave a like on this video within the next five seconds for 2K to finally fix their servers. I would not risk it. If you guys are looking to get your builds and badges grinded for NBA 2K22, make sure to hit up Star Grinders on Twitter or Instagram to get your badges and builds grinded fast, easy, and legit. The links to his stuff will be in the description. Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? Yo, what's up to YouTube? It's your boy Fizz Bang, but we got another video today. I'm coming to you guys with the best badges in NBA 2K22. This week, I'm going to be giving y'all the boys a lot of help. I know y'all boys need the best badges. I already gave y'all the best takeover. I know y'all boys need the best bad setup. I know y'all need all this stuff, so I'm giving y'all this joint this week. And also, the best 99 overall method to help y'all boys get y'all max badges and grind y'all build as fast as possible. So if you anything that I said sound good to you, go ahead, drop a like. Because these videos take forever. So I need the support from y'all boys if y'all want these joints to come as soon as possible it's that simple turn on post notifications hit that sub button but yeah today we got y'all boys with the best badges in the game i'll be going over some honorable mentions giving y'all categories of badges that are still very good but there is really just gonna be a top 10 for this video so yeah but um yeah that's going to be all that i'm doing in this video but yeah without further ado let's hop straight into it Alright, so like I said, we're giving y'all boys the best badges, but first we gotta give y'all honorable mentions, which are a lot of really good badges, because the top 10, it was just a lot of badges I couldn't fit, because I ain't gonna lie, 2K did a good job trying to balance a lot of these badges, but yeah, let's hop into it. So, first things first for the honorable mentions is going to be finishing. So for the finishing, we got Slithy Finisher first. Y'all know what I feel about this. This is gonna get you the best animation possible in an animation-based game like 2K, especially on this 2K. Now, the only thing about this is on next gen, really, is why it's in honorable mention because, you know what I'm saying? On next gen, it's just not as good because of the dunk meter. If it wasn't for the dunk meter, it would be still a very good badge. It just makes it not as useful as it used to be. So yeah, that's really what I would say. Um, but O'Karen Jin is still one of the best finishing badges in the game. I still wouldn't say it's top 10 anymore because how much more skill it takes to be a slasher now. But yeah, at the same time, uh, Silly Finisher still is a very good, useful badge. Next, Giant Slayer. It's pretty much for canceling out the height advantage, but the main reason I have it in the honorable mention, and it could be top 10 because of this, is because it reduces the ability to get blocked. So pretty much, it makes you not get blocked nearly as much. Cancels out Rim Protector, and Rim Protector is by far, we gonna get into that later, but yeah. It's very important to cancel that out. So Giant Slayer, you could argue this top 10, but I'm not gonna go that far. Next is going to be Lob City Finisher. Lob City Finisher improves the chances of completing the lob. Y'all know how this works. It's gonna help you get more lobs and stuff like that. On current gen, lobs are very overpowered. Next gen, we still trying to get acclimated with the lobs. So I wouldn't say this is as overpowered, but yeah, it's still a good badge, a good badge that you really wanna have on pretty much any slasher build. Next is Acrobat. Now, Acrobat could be a good, good bag. I wouldn't say it's a top 10, but it's actually one of the better finishing badges in the game because your rolls, hops, spins, all that is really good in this game. So I want to make sure that that's known and it's going to make you make it at a way higher probability. Next is Back Down Punisher. This is for my post score. It's going to pretty much help you back down people as much as possible. You have to have this on to be able to back down people. So yeah, you want to have on Back Down Punisher. Drop Stripper is going to pretty much help you do drop steps. Pretty self-explanatory. Post spin technique is going to help you do post spins pretty tough explanatory all three of these post badges are very very overpowered and good and they're going to do exactly what they say they do really well so yeah then when it comes to mouse in the house this is another badge you can use as a post score but you can also use this as like a oversized guard and you will be really overpowered with it but at the same time it's really only useful for certain builds so that's another reason i didn't have it on the top 10 but yeah put that boss pretty much going anytime you get an office rebound you try to go back up it's gonna have a higher percentage of making you do letting you do a dunk and you're gonna have a higher make percentage on the layup so yeah put back boss is another good badge fast twitch this is, is going to be according with the next badge rise up rise up makes it easier to dunk when under the basket so it's gonna make you do more standing dunks fast twitch speeds up standing lips and dunks around the rim so 
Rise Up is gonna make you do more standing dunks. Fast Twitch is gonna make those standing dunks way faster so that you don't get blocked. So that combo is really, really, really good. So those two badges, if you talking about, if those two badges was one badge, 100% could, you could argue for big man, 100% you could argue is ten, top 10. But for video purposes, I couldn't put it top 10. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the finishing badges. All right, next is going to be the shooting. Now for the shooting first badge, now this is the closest badge out of all the honorable mentions, honestly, that didn't make the top 10 blinders. This is an overpowered badge from next gen, back again on current gen. This badge is amazing. What it does is whenever somebody pretty much is on the side or coming from the side, it pretty much messes up the contest it doesn't you don't really get contested from that especially if they have their hands down what this badge is really good for for the people that love to use screens people that love to crap people that do those two things very overpowered so yeah i can see people saying this is top 10 but the defense on this game is so good i had to put a lot of badges for that in the top 10 i don't even think that's really debatable on if those are top 10 or not to be honest with you next dead eye kind of a really better badge than it was last year but in my opinion dead eye is just as good as blinders for me because my play style i don't really do crabs as much i don't really try to use screens as much as other people but i can do that stuff but dead eye is going to affect all aspects of somebody closing out on you so i like that a little bit more personally but i do understand how broken blinders is for certain play styles then when it comes to mismatch expert honestly this is an underrated badge this is an extremely underrated badge, especially on current gen, because on current gen, they're still trying to have that little play style of like the play shot with the P lock and the glass union finisher. But some people are actually having shooting bigs now. So for the shoot people teams that have shooting bigs, you don't really have to worry about having to use this. But for the people that's going against like inside bigs or you have an inside big, you probably want to use this because this is going to be pretty much like giant slayer, but for shooting. So yeah, this is really overpowered and really good. Then when it comes to the green machine, that's gonna help you get more greens. Self-explanatory. I don't need to go over that pretty much because that's been in the game for years. Catch and shoot, another great badge for catching and shooting, but it really says, it makes an emphasis to say it's for three-pointers. So I'm guessing it's only for three-pointers, but that's not a big deal. We really don't use it for anything else. Corner specialist, they changed the way they describe it. Corner specialist gives a boost to shots taken in the corner. Deep range shots taken along the baseline of the court received a boost whether it is off the dribble or off a catch so they don't really say if it's for threes or midi so i'm guessing it's still for mid-range so corner specialist is still working the same way they just chose a different way to describe it so yeah corner specialist and catch and shoot really good for like spot ups for sure highs hunter another good badge for spotters another good badge for iso players another good badge for people that even uh, screens Pretty much whenever you get hot zones, boost the shot percentage for attempts taken in a player's favorite spots and shots that are taken in player's favorite hot zones are given a boost. So pretty much you get hot zones, it's going to be easy to shoot. You get hot zones on top of that, it begins to get way easier to shoot. So yeah, very good badge. I kind of could have had that in top 10 too. A lot of these shooting badges are really good badges. Stop and pop. Boost shot rating on standstill three-pointers after dribbling. Pretty much boost a shot. Pretty much if you like to shoot threes do quick stops and stuff like that but you don't like to do off the dribble you want to do like the standstill ones like the quick stops and stuff like that stop and pop is the badge for you very good badge it was a good badge on next gen it's on current gen now i love that badge limitless spot up now if you want to know how range extender works you have chef for off the dribble and limitless spot up for people that like to say stand still personally I don't think Chef is as regularly usable as Limitless Spot Up. I feel like Chef takes a lot more skill, but for the people that do like, have always liked the off the dribble shots, like people like Ticino, it's gonna be very overpowered. But for the regular people, Limitless Spot Up, I feel like is the better badge because it's gonna be more consistent, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. Booster range that one can effectively shoot standing three point shots. So yeah, Limitless Spot Up, a good badge in my opinion. Very good badge and the only thing I really would love to understand is if it's like range extender was on 2K20 or range extender on 2K21, or is it like deep threes from last year, but it's for standstills only. That's what I would like to know. Then when it comes to the playmaking, we got the playmaking pretty much first badge is dimer. Now dimer, not really as necessary of a badge as it's always been because shooting is so much easier, but it still boosts the shot percentage for open teammates on jump shots after catching a pass, and it's mainly for in the half court. So yeah, that's a good one, and it's really for open shots and stuff like that. Then when it comes to floor general, that's going to give you attribute bonuses, but they have a bronze to the Hall of Fame. It's going to be plus one to plus four to all the offensive attributes. 
Then we have hyperdrive, pretty much increasing dribble skills while on the move. Increases the speed at which a player can perform moving dribble moves as they attack down the court. So pretty much it's going to let you dribble up the court a lot faster when it comes to trying to do. Maybe you dribbling up the court and doing a crossover. Maybe you dribbling up the court and doing a behind the back. It's going to make that behind the back a crossover way faster. Then when it comes to quick chain, improve the ability to quickly chain dribble moves together. So uh, on next gen, this is actually a badge you kind of want to have because your combos are going to be really slow. And with people with high steal rating, they can kind of rip that easily because they can time that easier because it's so slow. I'm not... I think on current gen it's kind of similar, but on current gen you can get like, you can get quick chain, but it's not gonna make as big of a difference on current next gen. But yeah, uh, current, for people that like to dribble, quick chain is gonna be a very amazing badge for you. Just that simple. Then when it comes to handles for days, that's gonna cancel out the stamina issue in this game, but there's not really a huge stamina issue in 2K22. I'm gonna be honest with you, if you have a 99 stamina, you'll be perfectly fine. I love the stamina in this game, I'm not gonna lie. It works the way it pretty much should have always, it seems like it was always meant to be played to be honest with you then when it comes to unpluckable pretty much it's gonna make it harder for you to get bump stolen or well, it's not gonna do anything for bump steals actually but it's gonna make it harder to get stolen from like when it comes to pickpockets it's gonna be canceling out the badge like pickpocket but pickpocket is still a lot better than unpluckable we're gonna get into that later then when it comes to stop and go very 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 good badge in this game way better than the previous 2k's uh, it's gonna be helping you do it's gonna it's a good badge to go along with stop and pop It's a good badge to go along with quick first step really good badge really good badge. It's really what I'm gonna say you really want to test this badge out for yourself to see if you really feel the difference me personally I felt a huge difference needle threader increase the likelihood that tough passes can get by the defense another great badge pretty much if you're a person that like a big this is really I feel like needle threader is more for big man bullet passes more for guards you know what I'm saying because Big men, they just need their pass to be harder to get stolen. Guards need those faster passes so they can pretty much die. So, like, if you're a big man, you're trying to throw the ball up the court, you want that needle thread. You might even want bullet passer alongside it, but I feel like you want needle thread a little bit more. So, yeah. And, like, the next badge, bullet passer, makes your passes way faster. Very, 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 very good badge. If I could have put it top 10, I would. I just don't think it's cracking the top 10 at all. Maybe not even be that close because there's some shooting badges I would probably even put over that. Bell out a badge you definitely want to have for sure on next gen current gen maybe not as much because you're gonna have way better pass accuracy but still bailout is a really really amazing badge this year it's not as overpowered as it was 2k20 but it's a badge you really want to have or need to have i'm gonna be honest increases the chances of successfully completing a pass from midair so pretty much if you're getting double team if you're trying to go up into an animation you get a bad animation you want to pass out of that bailout is gonna be really good to bail you out so yeah that's gonna do the playmaking badge all right, next is going to be the defensive badge. Now, the defensive badges, if there's a category that's by far better than any of the other categories, I would say that's easily defense. First badge, interceptor. This could be in the top 10. This badge is overpowered. It increases chances at getting steals and pass lanes. You get the joint to go to Hall of Fame, you're going to be all in them lanes. It's going to be like 2K19 all over again. I already see it right now. Interceptor is going to be one of the most broken badges in the game. Chase down artists increases or raises the chances of getting a chase down block. When you put this to bronze, you unlock the chase down block animation. You go silver, gold, and hall of fame. You're going to be jumping higher and running that much faster at each tier. So yeah, man, chase down artists. Again, a very, very broken badge in this game. Bro, defense in this game is really crazy. Now, I don't know how this is going to be when everybody starts to get their finishing. Everybody starts to get their shooting. Everybody starts to get their play making but as of right now the defensive badges are ruling the game just that simple when it comes to pick dodger pick dodger actually is a good badge this year approve improves a player's ability to navigate through screens effectively on defense but at hall of fame can blow through screens in the black top or part bro pick dodger is a really good badge this year it's actually a useful badge it's a useful badge it's literally gonna cancel out brick wall and brick wall is extremely overpowered this year just getting that out the way Rebound Chaser. Rebound Chaser improves a player's ability to chase down rebounds. We all know how important this is for big man. One of the first badges you should put on as a big man every single time. Very necessary badge. And I feel like every one of those honorable mentions on the defensive side could have been argued to be in the top 10. Because they're all very useful, needed, or just that broken. All right, so let's hop into the top 10 badges in the game. So for the top 10 badges in the game, I'm going to say off the rip, the first badge that we're going to go over coming in at number 10 is Sniper. We're starting it out with a shooter badge, and this is the only shooting badge to make it on this list. Now, why is there not more shooting badges on this list? Because honestly, I feel like the shooting is just that much 
easier. It's not very necessary, but this bag in particular is kind of OP and broken beyond all the other shooting badges. Sniper, jump shots taken with slightly early, slightly late timing will receive a boost. And this is not no regular boost, it's a significant boost, while early or late shots will receive a bigger penalty. And another thing that they really don't say on it is that it actually makes you get more greens, even if you would, it should have been like a slightly early or slightly late. So I feel like it even spreads the green window out. So yeah, I love Sniper, very good badge. Now it's kind of annoying to go against because a lot of people hit whites with it, but that just shows you how overpowered this badge is. This is kind of what I felt like they wanted flexible relief to be all the time. I actually seen somebody on Twitter say, take this badge out of the game and put flexible release, but flexible release was literally a terrible badge. It was a terrible badge. Sniper is actually what it was meant to be. So yeah, Sniper, if you're leaving people open, they're gonna be able to hit knock down consistently. If you wide open, cause open, you're gonna be able to hit extremely consistently with this badge at gold hall of fame whatever you got it at all right next is going to be the brick wall badge N coming at number nine is brick wall brick wall this year does a lot now i know at first all brick wall did was set screens N then it was a badge that pretty much meshed into it named bruiser that pretty much drained people's energy still does both of those two things but now they took out a badge called moving truck and what did they do they blended it with brick wall so now brick wall is three badges in one so not only are you gonna be able to set better screens you're gonna be able to drain people's energy on any physical contact that can be on a box out a screen anything as long as you touching them or doing anything to somebody you're draining their energy and now whenever somebody pretty much try to back you down it's just that much harder so yeah brick wall is just an amazing amazing big man build badge and i feel like the reason they did that is because a lot of people weren't even able to use they weren't even able to use moving truck i guess but i don't know how took it would even know something like that but yeah brick wall comes in at number nine Coming in at number eight, and I told y'all, boy, the defensive badges in this game are the most overpowered broken badges in the game. Intimidator. This badge finally works the way it was supposed to be meant to be worked. This is going to be pretty much getting you the best shot contest on the interior and the perimeter in this game. Officer players have less success shooting when contested by players with this badge. Also boost the shot defense ratings. Also boost the shot defense ratings when tightly guarding an opponent. Intimidates offensive players causing them to miss more shots miss shots more often so pretty much this badge is gonna give you the best shot contest and also when you play good defense on people it's gonna give you higher attributes so yeah that's just just a really good badge man intimidator really good badge any build if you want to play defense you really want to have intimidator on to some tier whether it's bronze to hall of fame you want to have it on it's that simple next now this is just going to show you how good the badges are this year because clamps is one of the this is by far the best clamps has ever been because the defense on this game already is amazing there's no sliding and then clamps is even better than it was last year so yeah clamps defenders have access to quicker cut off moves and are more successful when bumping or hip riding the ball handle Clamps makes defense feel so good i'm not gonna lie to you defense on this game feels so good because of clamps and yeah clamps it goes along with other badges to make other badges more overpowered. I just don't think it's as overpowered as that other badge, but clamps is amazing. If you want to play defense in this game, you want to have clamps. It's going to help you play the best on-ball defense possible, no matter what you're going against, ISO, screens, whatever it is. So yeah, clamps, amazing badge. All right, coming in at number six, a badge that pretty much you kind of want to have a badge like clamps and intimidator to go along with it, Menace. This badge is literally the definition of being a menace. While guarding and staying in front of an opponent, their attributes will drop if good defense is being played. So pretty much, I don't even know if it's even that deep as it kind of tries to describe it as, to be honest with you. But what it pretty much does is, whenever you pretty much guard somebody, it drops their ratings. And that is a really, really, really good badge. So say for instance, somebody makes like a two-way slashing playmaker, you, you get this menace joint to activate, you're gonna be dropping their attributes. So this is like a cancel of floor general. It's like kinda trying to cancel out floor general, but even if they don't have somebody on their team using floor general, menace can pretty much make it even worse. So yeah, but on this game, I'm not gonna lie, shooting is so easy. I've seen people shoot consistently with a 55 three-pointer, so. That is what it is, but at the same time, Menace is still an amazing, amazing badge. It's that simple. It kind of reminds me of the old badge that they had, Defensive Stopper, I think it was called, where it dropped badges and attributes, I believe, but yeah. 
All right, now we're getting into the top five. And I know y'all boys was waiting on a finishing badge because I ain't went over one finishing badge in the top 10 yet. Y'all know how I go for y'all slashes. But they definitely made slashing and finishing. Give 2K8 credit. They made it take way more skill, especially on next gen. Now, current gen, it's kind of, it's not nearly as hard as next gen, but it's still harder than it was on 21. 21, you could get a contact dunk every possession. No problem. People could triple team the paint, triple team you on the perimeter. You was getting past them with a speed glitch and getting straight to the rim. They made it definitely harder. Posterizer increases the chances of throwing a, down a dunk on your defender. Pretty much gonna get you more contact dunks. It works the same way as contact finisher, but only for the contact dunk part. So pretty much, if you remember how contact finisher was, posterizer works the same way when it comes to contact dunk. So when you get the contact dunk package, it's a 20% chance of a contact dunk. When you get posterizer on top of that, it's 15% on top of that. So at bronze, it's 35% chance of a contact dunk. At silver, that's 50% chance of a contact dunk. And at gold, that's 65% chance of a contact dunk. And at Hall of Fame, that's 80% chance of a contact dunk. And that's just with having the posterizer badge and the contact dunk package. That's not even going over what your dunk rating actually is. So yeah, posterizer, very, very important badge to have. Um, I wouldn't say it's overpowered in any way or capacity as it was last year, especially on next gen. But for sure, if anything, they made it more needed. They made it more needed because to, if you want to actually get a content dunk, you at least need to have it bronze. Because you're literally not dunking on anybody without it being at least bronze. But then if you really want to get them consistent of any type, you really want to have it gold at the least. And then Hall of Fame is on a whole nother level of gold. I'm going to get into that a whole nother day. But yeah, Posterizer comes in at number five. And all right, coming in at number four. Now these badges are, this is where the badges start to get overpowered and broken. Ankle breaker. When performing step backs and certain other certain moves, the defender stumbles or falls more frequently when biting the wrong way. So pretty much you make the defender go the wrong way, you're taking ankles. And you put this alongside with like ankle breaking shots on next gen or playmaker take from current gen, it becomes even more broken. And it's kind of funny because at one point ankle break was so overpowered, people was literally getting kicked out of games every game because if you got an ankle breaker on somebody, it would kick them or it, uh, apparently it would even kick you or your teammates. So that's kind of crazy. But yeah, ankle breaker, very good badge. Apparently they passed that too. I want to make sure I missed that, but yeah. Ankle Breaker, definitely a really good badge. And this was only on current gen, by the way. But yeah, um, Ankle Breaker, very good badge on both next gen and current gen. Very good. All right, next. Now, this right here should show y'all boys how good the badges are on current gen. Quick first step is more important than it ever has been. Ever has been. Because the defense is just so overpowered. So it's more needed than ever. It's more overpowered than ever. And it's still only at number three. And y'all know off the rip, what I always rank quick first step is either one or two. It's starting the year off at three. That just shows y'all how overpowered the defensive badges are in this game. But yeah, quick first step when driving out of a triple threat or after a size up, ball handlers have access to quicker and more effective launches. So you just pretty much speed boost a lot faster. It's gonna get you the fastest speed boost. So yeah, quick first step, an amazing badge this year. You really, really want to, need to have this badge to some capacity. So yeah, quick first step, definitely a top three badge in the game. And whatever order you wanna say, if you think it's the best badge, I wouldn't be mad at that. I just think these other two are just a tier above it. But you know what I'm saying? Quick first step to each of their own. You know what I'm saying? It's that simple. And coming in at number two, now the two best badges kind of are interchangeable, but I do feel like the number one badge is almost a tier above it. Almost. I don't really think it's close, but I, I wouldn't be mad if somebody said this is better because of, I've seen some crazy things with this badge. Pickpocket. It increases the chances of a steal and reduces the chances of a foul when attempting to strip the ball from a ball handler. Also improves the chances of successful layup strips. So, pretty much, pickpocket is broken. It's broken. Pretty much, if you remember on next gen, the, at the beginning of the year, the best way to get stops was literally pickpocket. And I can tell you right now, 2K has made the, at, the steal attribute actually matter. So they put the tiers. If you were actually want to finally start being able to get steals, you want to have at least a 70 steal attribute. And then at 80, you get even better animations. And then at 90, you get even better animations. And at 99, the steal rating is broken at 99 off the rip whether you pass lanes on balls all that but my bill only has like an 85 steal i reached that in it's getting a steal almost every time and i barely get called for a foul and i don't even have pickpocket yet i get pickpocket that's gonna be bro bro i've even tested pickpocket it's just bro this badge is just, i ain't gonna lie this badge is just extremely broken i'm gonna be real with you and it just 
it just they they damn near need to patch this to be honest it needs to be nerfed a little bit because i guess a lot of people don't have they play making but like hey i ain't gonna lie if i'm being completely honest i damn near think it should be patched i ain't gonna lie but yeah pickpocket definitely comes in at number two and coming in at number one in the game the rent protector blocks as overpowered as steals are in this game blocks Bro, blocks, if there was anything to compare to how overpowered contact dunks was on next gen last year, it's definitely the blocks. It's definitely the blocks. And the blocks is the reason, it's not even the full reason why finishing is as hard as it is, but it is a big reason. And this badge is a huge reason why blocks are as overpowered as they are. Improves players' ability to block shots, reduces chances of getting dunked on and unlock special block animations and enhances other badges like intimidator and chase down artists and pogo stick it just does so much man it just does so much man it just does so much so yeah man um like it's just so good of a badge and also when it comes to posterizer it cancels out posterizer now they took out the takeover part but like at the same time they kind of took out the takeover part and put in an even better part like like come on bro i ain't gonna lie bro bro rim protector bro rim protector is literally canceling out the entire slasher like community like i ain't gonna lie rim protector is overpowered broken whatever you want to call it best badge in the game but yeah man that's going to be the best badges in nba 2k 22 for current gen and next gen so yeah man if you guys want more videos like this the next video should be the best badge setup hopefully after that i'll have a 99 overall method done but if not i will drop like a build video just for just to give me some extra time but that build video will be a banger because i ain't got nothing but bangers for these builds i've been finding but yeah with that being said make sure to drop a like on this video if you enjoy subscribe if you're new if y'all really want to show as much support as possible make sure to smash break and show that like button i really need those these videos take a long time to make and create so i really need the support subscribe if you're new i really would appreciate it turn on post notifications for the first day every single video share the video to anybody you think this will help with it yeah man it's your boy fish man and i'm gonna do it, man tell him to bring me my money yeah. Yeah. Roll, roll, roll.